Let's get started with Muse tutorial number one, templates, grids, and pages. Before you open up Muse, you'll need to assemble all your collateral, which is your images, your sketches, your color scheme, and perhaps even a composite that you may have created. I'm going to locate my files that I've created for the class under organization. And I have a folder called images with all the images in it that I'll be using for the site. I've created a little ice cream and cake site called Ice Hot. Yes, nice name, I know. Um, but um, I'll show you how to use and implement all these images into your site. So you need to start by collecting these images and these elements. You can do that, collect photographs by either taking the photographs yourself or having your client hire a photographer to take the photographs. Or you can tr try to pay for stock photography from a site like Getty Images. Getty, Veer, a lot of other images. There are a lot of companies like this that sell images. Um, if you're using them for educational purposes, then they tend to not come after you as much. But probably the best way to do is just hire your own photographer or have the company hire them. Another way to do this is to use a sort of Creative Commons license. Creative Commons is free open source images. Flickr has a great Creative Commons index. All these images are free. Uh, but they do have different stipulations. Sometimes you have to attribute uh, or cite the original creator. Sometimes they have to. You have to make sure they're not for non-commercial commercial purposes. So there's different licenses, but they're all free, and it's a good site. And I've used this before. So let's also look at. Uh, you should assemble your sketches. So I'm using this sketch for the site with my logo uh, in the upper left-hand corner. Uh, this big slideshow, these other elements, uh, these three images as separate elements, and then uh, some flavors down the bottom. You'll also notice I've got like a nice hierarchy set up of one uh, for the main slideshow, and then these others as secondary and then tertiary elements. So again, creating your hierarchy is important. Okay. I've also created a composite of the site in Illustrator. You do not need to create a composite in the, for the site in Illustrator or Photoshop. You could if you'd like, but you don't need to for this class. I find it helpful to actually kind of flesh out the site a little bit more between the sketch and the final design so that I can see exactly what I'm doing. Okay, So let's go to Muse now. What's great about Muse is that Muse is a what you see is what you get editor for web. It's really the first of its kind. It allows you to create websites without no, having to know HTML or any kind of coding. Uh, it's great for designers. Uh, it's really flexible. So let's first start by going to File New Site. Under the initial layout, you're going to select Desktop. You can also create for tablets and phones, for, but for this class we'll just be creating for desktop computers. The next, make sure your page width is set at 900. Um, you can change the width to whatever you'd like. My site, I've designed it to be 900. Most sites are anywhere from 900 to 1200 wide. You want to keep it limited so that it fits within a smaller sized window or um, computer monitors. The height will change depending upon how much elements you add to the page. So as you add more elements, it'll automatically change the size. So you don't need to worry about this too much. Columns will leave at 1. Column width will change to 900. The gutter will change to zero. All these margins I like to keep manual, so I'm going to take those all to zero. And the padding I'll set at zero. And this likes to this likes to try to set it back to 940. So just make sure that says 900, 900, 900. And the rest are zero. Okay. Resolution is the last thing. Put it on standard. High DPI is if you want to make your site uh, viewable on high resolution devices or retina screens but for now let's just use standard okay all right when you create a new site to start it gives you this initial site plan you'll notice in the upper right hand corner you can see the first step of the design or web design process which is the, your plan or your site architecture uh, the next you can actually design your site and then you can preview the site at any time in muse to see what it's actually going to look like and then publishing would be exporting your files to upload to a server to be to make them live on a website or on the internet. If you see here, you can now see your home page. This is your first default page that you're given. Um, so that would be your starting page. You can add pages here. 
So I'm going to add uh, another page called contact. I'll call this one menu. I'll move it over. And I'll create a new page called visit. And the last one called gallery. I'm actually going to change the name of the home page to lowercase. I want my menu navigation to be uh, based, your navigation will be based on these pages. Let's now go to your master page. You double click your master page, you can now see your sort of bare bones grid system. Uh, you'll see with if you drag and you know move these little arrows, you'll see the top of the page can be moved. The header tends to be where your navigation and logo sit. We'll change that in a minute. The footer is where all your you know other information like copyright, any extra additional um, stuff goes towards the bottom. And of course, the bottom of the page you can change as well. All right. So the first thing we're going to look at is. Um, you can see all your menu items at the top of the page and then this sort of secondary menu. This will change your colors and strokes and text and a lot of that. You can also see your palettes on the far right hand side, color, text, swatches, um, layers, library, assets. If you don't see any of those palettes, you can also find them or locate them in this window drop down menu. Okay. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is go to file place where we want to place our template, which is your sketch, right? So essentially you've created the sketch. You want to place this in here as a template. So I'm going to open this. And you're just basically going to click and drag. It gives you a margin on the left and the right hand side anyway. So you kind of can need to move it into the center column and drag and drag a box, drag and drop a box, and there's your template. We'll delete this later, but for now this gives us a way to sort of um, place all our grid lines and our images. First thing we're going to do is change the header size and then you can literally drag and drop off the ruler these little guides. So I would create, keep dragging and dropping these guides. Now you're going to continue using your sketch. I'm going to actually place in my composite so that I can be a little more careful with my design. So here's where I can really get careful as to where all these lines go. Again, you don't need to create a composite. You can if you'd like, if you're familiar with Photoshop, but you don't need to. And I'm going to basically drag a guide for everything that sort of starts and stops. I'm just sort of fleshing out this entire page here. So when they first come to the page, again, it's a nice hierarchy. First thing they see is a slideshow. The next thing they'll see, the second level of hierarchy are probably these three images in the middle. And, you know, then the last would be the sort of flavors button, flavors down at the bottom. But basically, I'm dealing with the three column grid here. Okay, so now I've got that set. If you go back to your plan, you'll notice that all your pages adopt the same look as your template. Okay, So we'll worry about that in a minute. Let's go back to our master page by double clicking it and let's lay in our menu. So we're going to start by going to our widgets library and go to menu horizontal. You can drag that over. Now what you'll see is it automatically populates this menu with the uh, site architecture or the site plan, right? Menu, home, menu, contact, visit, gallery. Okay. So you can also change the options for this. Um, you can see that it's already sorting from the top level pages. You can make it manual if you'd like. You can edit them together or individually. You probably want to edit them together so they have a consistent look and feel right and so forth so let's first uh, just select them select that let's change the text to like a more darker maroon okay let's change the fill to white and sometimes you have to um, select maybe an individual box 
like that. And that's where you'll get the gray. We'll change this to white for now. So that, well, since I'm editing all together, it's changing all of them. Okay, I'll change the font size up a little bit. The last thing you'll see is the font's not right, right? And you want and fonts are important. So in order to sort of make this work right, you want to be um, able to use the right fonts. Now, old school web design says that you have a limit of 10 fonts that you can use for a website. These are the same 10 fonts that are basically on every computer in the world. So it, it'll all those fonts will look fine. However, if I try to use a system font like this crazy, some crazy all-star font that somebody doesn't have on their computer, it won't present and visualize it properly for the user, for the viewer. So your only other option then is to use um, what we call web fonts. And luckily, Adobe's created these web fonts. Google also has web fonts. If so you go to add web fonts, you can see all these existing web fonts. These are really cool. So you, you can now sort of get better fonts for your site. And you can also select different filters. Let's say, um, you know, I want to use Antic, Able. Uh, let's see what else if they've got. Comforta. And just hit OK. And it will add those fonts to your web fonts menu. Now when you go back to your text, you can go to your web fonts. Ah, let's see what Comforto looks like. It's kind of nice and friendly. I'll use that one. And then, or maybe I'll try Antic. Anyway, you'll just need to look and see what you're getting. And I'm going to take it down a font size. And I'm going to go over here to my text palette and make some additional fine-tuned adjustments. I want to space it out just a little bit more. We call that tracking or kerning. So I'm going to space it out just a little bit more. So I'm getting pretty close to what my original design was. I'm going to change the color just a little bit more. It's pretty close. So I actually, for now, I'm just going to lay this in, make sure it's moved in place. You can use the keyboard arrows to lay this in and move your gallery in place. Okay. So now we're set. Now you could always delete this and you'll be able to see that in your plan all your pages now have the same menu that you've created for your master. So this is handy. So you can go to any of these pages now, double click, and you'll see that, that this menu item is there. And you can even go to preview and you can see that this menu is actually active now. When you click on any of these, it actually works. It's actually taking the new pages, even though the pages aren't designed yet. Okay. In the next movie or presentation, I'll show you how to change the rollover states and add buttons, add images, and add a lot more functionality.